six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Welcome to Endurance. I'm Stephen, and this is your weekly spiritual workout. Today we're looking at balancing spiritual training and physical training. Now we're going to go deeper with Andy B. So today we're looking at a balancing act between being physically trained and spiritually trained. And there's a difference between the two. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, which is really the heart and passion of endurance, it says this. Well, it does when you can find it. Right, so physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. That's kind of cool. And that's really where endurance as a thing really was born out of. But let me just jump ahead to 1 John 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world, for if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. Now that's quite strong. When we think about how we need to love each other and the golden rule gets banded about, it's all this nice lovey-dovey stuff that really hasn't got any actual depth to it. There's far more than just being loving towards the people we meet. We were having a chat as a family last night just about the word love. And in the English language, we have one word. It's called the word love. But if you go into Greek, there's lots of words for the word love. So actually, when we're thinking about just talking about love or just thinking about the idea of love, actually, we're struggling just with that one word. Because as an English speaker, I use the word love to mean a whole multitude of things. Whereas in Greek, it was much easier to say, well, I love my brother different from I love my wife. The word for love is different and it means something very different. And that's really important. But you can't mistake this one. Love for the Father is not in them. If you love the world, if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. So if you have a love for what's going on around you, greater than God, God, you, you can't love God. Now that's really strong. And as ever in scripture, well, it is often quite strong, but it's also quite true. When we're trying to be physically fit or spiritually fit, we need to consider our love for Christ needs to always go greater. We don't need to be physically fit to worship God. It's that simple. It's important to look after yourselves. I'm getting back into mountain biking after a time of not being able to do much stuff. So I'm getting fitter again. And it's important when we can that we should. But the fact that you can exercise doesn't make you better. And if you can't exercise, it doesn't make you less of a Christian. Because spiritual training is something that every one of us has equal access to. Every one of us can do. And it's open to all. And it improves our relationship with Jesus, which is awesome. Flicking back to... 1 Timothy, for physical training is of some value. That's what I just said. But godliness has a value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Because physical training, as good as it is in this life, and it's really important, I'm loving mountain biking, I'm able to go faster and further and harder, and I'm much healthier and fitter and happier. It's brilliant. But that's only going to affect my life physically now. It's not going to have any difference whatsoever on when I die and go to heaven. What's going to matter then is something completely different. That's a spiritual exercise, which is why physical exercise is good. Spiritual exercise is better. Now, what's this love of the world business? Let's just jump into James. We like James. James makes us uncomfortable in a good way. Your religion. Let me just go here. James chapter 1, verse 27. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted in the world and that in the world bit is what we're talking about in 1 Timothy 8 4 verse 8 that whole thing about not being polluted means we need to be pure for Christ when we first come to faith we are who we are and then we change we become more like Jesus he infiltrates more and more of us as we let go of ourselves we become the best version we can possibly be but pure religion is nothing to do with exercise now, when I was at school, people used to say, oh, you're religious. And I got quite affronted by that. I'm not religious. I'm a Christian. And it wasn't exactly a great come up. But hey, it's what I had at the time. But actually, there was some truth and depth in what I said, because actually religion in, in itself isn't worth much. Jesus wasn't a fan of religion at all. The religious leaders and Jesus didn't get on. Tells us a lot about how important religion is. But good religion that God does accept as pure and faultless is looking after orphans, looking after widows in their distress. So it's a balancing act. I had an image of a, a flamingo 
and our summer at Flint Mingo's at a zoo one time and they were balancing on one leg and as good as it is and it takes a bit of practice you can stand on one leg and it's kind of cool maybe but eventually you need to get off one leg and go into two legs because you need to move because you can't hop about all day so I was thinking about flamingos and how they're good at balancing. I was thinking about scales because we want them to balance. The thing is with God, when we're balancing, we need that not to be perfectly balanced. We need to be balanced towards God. So rather than trying to make it a perfect balance of just a bit of this and just a bit of this and just a bit of this, we need to actually be focused on God and the rest will come into its own balance all by itself. So as you're going into the day, into the week, don't think about how you're going to try and keep everything balanced because it's really hard. Just focus on what is God asking me to do today? And if we're focused on Christ, the balance will sort itself, just like the fruit of the Spirit. It's not what we do, it's what the Holy Spirit does in us because we have a relationship with God. In the same way, if we focus on God and seek to be balanced in our spiritual journey with Him, the rest will take care of itself because we won't have to work on it because the Holy Spirit will inspire us. It's not some magical little thing that happens. The Holy Spirit helps us. So balancing act. Let's make sure that in our religion, it's good religion, caring for those who can't care for themselves. And let's make sure that our physical exercise, our pursuit of being physically more comfortable, physically better, never exceeds our desire to be with God. Here's a little thought. If you read a book for two hours a night, could you read a Bible for two hours a night to balance it? Well, probably not. We, we would struggle to that. Where's the four hours going to come from? So it's not about just perfectly making two hours here and two hours there. But when the balancing out with God, let's make sure that he comes first. Because when God comes first, the rest will sort itself out. Because as we focus on God, everything else takes its place. Welcome to Hashtag Go Do, where we give you three challenges to go do. Read the scriptures, 1 John 1 and 1 Timothy 4. And reflect, spend some time with God and think through where you're putting physical fitness before spiritual fitness. Remember to prioritise uh, spiritual training as you plan your day. And respond. Make sure the next time you go exercising, whether it's cycling or running or weightlifting, make sure you spend some time and thank God for the fact you're able to do that. Hashtag go do.